Ohio. It's a wild state and I'm back to talk more about it. I've gone through the comments. You guys left some great suggestions down there. So I'm going to be covering some of those today. So your town might be on here. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing for you or not. We're going to kick things off with Loveland. How on earth did I not put Loveland, Ohio in part one? Loveland is home to one of the strangest creatures said to stalk the state, the Loveland Frog. But it's also home to a supposedly haunted castle. Loveland Castle was constructed by Harry Andrews. A uh, very interesting man this guy was. He had a lot of interest in knights and medieval lore. Andrews was born in 1890. He worked as a medic during World War I. He then contracted meningitis during the war and was believed to be dead. His body was actually moved to the morgue, like he was done. But when his body was taken back to the hospital to be dissected, the doctors were like, hey, you know what, why not? Let's just see if we can get his heart beating again with adrenaline. Miraculously, it worked. Andrews, who'd now spent a whole bunch of time in Europe and then almost died, was now even more into medieval history and returned home with this newfound determination to build his very own castle. Eventually, he constructed Loveland Castle along the banks of the Little Miami River. Andrews then moved into the castle, where he lived until he died in 1981. Today, the castle is the headquarters for the Knights of the Golden Trail, an organization Andrews started dedicated to upholding the principles of knighthood. But Harry Andrews' spirit is said to still roam the castle grounds. Objects will mysteriously disappear or move, and voices are heard echoing through the corridors. And as I said at the top, of course, Loveland's supernatural reputation doesn't end with this castle. One of the most famous legends is that of the Loveland Frog, or frogs. There have been multiple large frog-like creatures spotted near the Little Miami River over the years. Next up, we have Ashtabula, which is said to be haunted by the spirits of a tragic train disaster. So on December 29th, 1876, the Pacific Express No. 5 crossed the Ashtabula Bridge. But because of particularly cold weather and structural weaknesses, the bridge collapsed, sending the train plummeting into the icy river below. And in the end, 98 people died. The scene must have been absolutely horrific, with rail cars crashing into each other and igniting in flame. And firefighters were unable to put out the flames, so people just cried out in pain and horror as they were consumed by fire, trapped in the wreckage. It was one of the worst rail accidents in US history, and the screams of those victims still haunt the area to this day. Some say you can occasionally hear them above the rush of the river. The Chestnut Grove Cemetery holds the remains of 19 of these victims, but their spirits are said to be very much active. Visitors to the cemetery have reported seeing ghostly apparitions. But along with the victims of the tragedy, there's also said to be the ghost of Charles Collins, one of the developers of the bridge. Witnesses claim to have seen his guilty spirit weeping at the sight of the tragedy or crying over people's graves. Some claim to see tiny lights even hovering below the new bridge where the old one once stood. Rogue's Hollow near Doylestown, Ohio has its fair share of spooky tales as well. It's said that a mill worker died in a pretty gruesome manner, getting crushed by the mill wheel, and now his spirit is said to guard the area, keeping outsiders at bay. Then there's the eerie tale of the headless horse and the ghost oak tree. So at one time there was a large oak tree near Route 65, and one of its branches hung so low that riders on horseback had to duck as they passed under it. Well, one story goes that the branch was weighed down extra low with ice, and a poor horse just ran into it at top speed, lobbing off its head. From that point on, riders passing the area late at night would occasionally come across a devilish figure riding a ghostly, headless horse. Next up, we have Oxford, Ohio, which has one of the coolest ghosts, a phantom motorcyclist. So the story goes that back in the 40s, there was this farmer's daughter. She was head over heels for this guy it was a bit of a James Dean type leather jacket, motorcycle, very rebellious. Also a lot like me, minus the motorcycle 
the leather jacket, and the rebellious part. His name was James, that's the similarity. And her father was not too thrilled about their relationship. He thought the guy was trouble, and he probably wasn't wrong. He forbade his daughter from seeing him. So to avoid her father's disapproval, they met up in complete secret, usually late at night when the coast was clear. And when it was, the girlfriend would flash the porch light three times as a signal for him to come over. Well, one night, the boyfriend decided he wanted to take their relationship to the next level and propose. He saw the three flashes and revved up his motorcycle, racing towards her house to pop the question. But as soon as he sped down the road, he lost control of his bike, crashing into a barbed wire fence. And ever since, people claim they've seen this mysterious light flickering in the distance along the road where he crashed, said to be the spirit of the phantom motorcyclist, still trying to reach his girl's house to ask for her hand in marriage. Next on the list is Chillicothe, where there were a series of mysterious disappearances between 2014 and 2015. Now, it all began in the spring of 2014 when Charlotte Trago vanished without a trace. Trago, uh, who had struggled with addiction, was a mother of two, and she remains missing to this day. Shortly after Trago's disappearance, another woman, Tamika Lynch, who was a friend of Trago's, went missing as well. Her body was discovered three weeks later by kayakers. It's pretty obvious there was foul play, but the official cause of her death was deemed inconclusive. Then there was the disappearance of Wanda Lemons in November of 2014. She's also never been found. On Christmas Day 2014, Shasta Hemelrick went missing. Her body was later recovered from the Scioto River. Authorities claim she took her own life, but her family, as well as many others, think someone took it from her. Then there was the disappearance and discovery of Tiffany Sayers' body in May 2015. Her remains were found in a creek covered by a sheet. And the final victim, Timberly Claytora's body, was found near an abandoned building. She died at the hands of a firearm. And the case just would have been handled completely differently if these women hadn't been battling addiction. They, that was the one thing connecting all these. They were all involved in that world. And there's just this kind of lax attitude when it comes to situations like this, unfortunately, where authorities are like, well, you know, they're part of that world. This is just what happens. So it really hasn't got the attention that it deserves. Now we move on to the town of Lancaster. Here, there used to be a home with an incredibly dark past, the Mudhouse Mansion. So the mansion's origins go back to the mid 19th century when it was built as a grand estate for a wealthy family. But as time went on, the home fell into disrepair and eventually it was abandoned and left to decay. And over the years, all these urban legends started to form around it. One of the most infamous stories is that the family had actually died in the mansion. Some versions of the tale claim that they were killed by an unknown assailant. Others go that they'd been driven to madness by some sinister force lurking within the mansion's walls. The Mudhouse Mansion was even said to be the birthplace of Bloody Mary herself. The mansion was demolished in 2015, but some folks will still claim to see ghostly figures of the mansion's former residents wandering the grounds, forever trapped in a limbo between the worlds of the living and the dead. All right, one of the strangest unsolved mysteries in Ohio has to be the Circleville Letters case. Now I'm gonna paraphrase here because there's a lot of detail. We could probably do an entire video about this case alone. But I'll go over it. It all started in 1976. Residents of Circleville started receiving these unsettling, threatening letters containing all these intimate details of their personal lives. The letters were postmarked from Columbus, Ohio, but there was no return address. One of the receivers of these letters was Mary Gillespie, a bus driver. She was accused in one of these letters of having an affair with the school superintendent and the letters just kept coming in from this unknown sender. Then Mary's husband, Ron, also became a target. He received a chilling ultimatum to end his wife's supposed affair or face dire consequences, death. 
Ron was found dead in his pickup truck after a mysterious phone call which had seemingly confirmed his suspicion about the letter writer's identity. He'd left in his pickup truck with a firearm but was found dead soon after having crashed into a tree. Now authorities ruled Ron's death an accident, but then the letters continued. A number of residents received letters saying that Sheriff Dwight Radcliffe, who had investigated Ron's death, had been involved in a cover-up. At one point, this mysterious writer even planted threatening signs along Mary Gillespie's bus route, one of which she went to take down, only to find out it'd been booby-trapped. If Mary had pulled the sign down in a particular way, a small pistol would have fired at her. Now, one man was arrested, Paul Freshore, but it's never been 100% verified that he was behind these letters. Eventually, he got out on parole. Case is still a mystery to this day. In the Hills and Dales Metro Park in Kittering, Ohio, there's a structure with a very shadowy past. The Haunted Witch's Tower, also known as Frankenstein's Castle. It was completed in 1941, and this 30-foot tall tower was constructed by boys with the National Youth Administration using salvaged stone. Its purpose was to provide panoramic views of the Community Country Club, with its lookout platform offering vistas stretching up to 15 miles. But because of how remote the tower is, a lot of young hooligans started flocking there in the 60s. Graffiti covered its walls, and bottles of liquor and beer cans littered the grounds. Even shingles torn from the roof and glass bottles became ammo for attacks on passing cars below on Pearson Boulevard. Then in 1967, during a thunderstorm, a young woman named Peggy Harmison sought shelter inside the tower with her boyfriend, Ronnie Stevens. Bad move. Lightning struck the tower, killing Peggy instantly. Her body was found on the 11th step, half covered in severe burns. Ronnie survived, but he was found in a state of uncontrollable shock, apparently running around screaming. And ever since that night, there have been stories about the ghost of Peggy haunting the tower. All right, let's switch things up with a haunted golf club. You don't hear about haunted golf clubs very often. Legend has it that in the 60s, a bride fell from a balcony at Oakhurst Golf Club in Grove City, Ohio. And her ghost is said to haunt the establishment to this very day. One of the most frequently reported sightings involves the ghostly figure of a woman dressed in white, believed to be the ghost of the bride. The upstairs kitchen, located near the ballroom where events are held, is said to be a hotspot for paranormal activity. Employees have reported hearing unexplained sounds of pots and pans clanging and knocking late at night, only to discover that items have been mysteriously rearranged by morning. All right, we're finishing things off today with, with Minerva. It all began in August of 1978, when the Caton family reported encountering a strange creature near their home. According to the Catons, they were enjoying a quiet evening when they heard unusual noises coming from outside. They came face to face with this towering ape-like creature standing over seven feet tall. The creature reportedly had shaggy dark fur covering its body, it had glowing red eyes, and emitted this foul odor. The Catons quickly ran back to the safety of their home and phoned the cops. In the days that followed, all these other sightings of a mysterious creature were reported by other residents of Minerva. Witnesses described similar encounters with a large, hairy beast lurking in the shadows, but none of the stories were scarier than the Catons, who said the creature returned to their property several times, hurling rocks at their home, staring at them through their kitchen window, and even killing their dog. It's uh, one of the most violent Bigfoot cases ever reported. With all that said, though, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.